So why did Alexander the Great of ancient Greece invade Rome? Alexander the Great, as we know, was from northern Greece and he joined, he united all of Greece. This was about 330 BC. And uh, he didn't invade, well, why would he go after Rome? Rome was uh, actually established as a, uh, fr from a Greek colony around 600 BC. Why did he go after the Persians? Well, the Persians were the number one enemy of Greeks since the time of the Battle of Marathon, which was around 480 BC, 150 years before Alexander the Great lived. So it was Alexander the Great who put an end to the Persian Empire. Now, uh, also the fact that in the Old Testament, the book of Daniel, the Archangel Gabriel told the prophet Daniel all about Alexander the Great, putting an end to the Persian Empire. When Alexander the Great went to Asia Minor, he did visit the uh, Temple of Solomon in Jerusalem. And the high priests did tell him about the prophecy given by Archangel Gabriel to the prophet Daniel concerning him. And he went there before he went down to Egypt. So this was the, basically the first reason. He didn't have to go after the West. He wanted to go after the number one enemy. Now, according to live science, Alexander the Great, had it, if he had invaded Rome, would he have won? As we said, there was no reason for him to go West. He had to go East. He also, one of the other things that he had to do was get rid of the Nephilim, which he called the abominable races. What he didn't do away with, he put he threw into pits and put uh, closed up with various special metals and built pyramids on top of them. Alexander the Great conquered a massive empire that stretched from the Balkans to modern day Pakistan and beyond. But if the Macedonian king had turned his attention westward as possible, he would have conquered Rome too feasibly, smiting the Roman Empire before it had a chance to rise. As we said, there was no reason to. It was a Greek colony. Now, so why didn't Alexander the Great try to conquer Italy? The answer may be that he died before he got the chance. No. Again, I'm reading the life science for you. It doesn't mean I agree with it at all. And I've given you the reasons why. Now, the king of Macedonia ruled from 336 BC to 323 BC when he died of an unknown illness. Again, as prophesied by the Archangel Gabriel to the uh, uh, prophet Daniel in the Old Testament, in the book of Daniel. And uh, he died of an unknown illness in Babylon at age of 32. And again, the prophecy given to prophet Daniel was that he would, his heirs would not uh, inherit his kingdom, but it would be divided into four. And that's exactly what happened. It was, uh, the kingdom was divided and given to four generals. Now, um, Alexander's empire fell apart shortly after his death. He had not died, however, it's possible had he not died, it's possible Alexander would have targeted Rome and his subst substantial forces defeated the Eternal City. Some ancient texts suggest Alexander the Great was planning a military campaign in the West that involved conquering parts of Italy, among other locations along the Mediterranean. The Roman historian Quintus Curtius Rufus, who lived in the first century AD, claimed Alexander the Great had planned a series of conquests that, if successful, would have expanded his empire all the way to what is now the Strait of Gibraltar. Alexander planned to build 700 ships to support this invasion, Rufus noted. Another, other ancient warriors, writers made similar claims. The Romans were convinced that Alexander would have attempted the conquest of Rome, but for modern historians, it's impossible to say. Nicholas Overton, Associate Professor of History at Washington State University, told Life Science. Some ancient writers claim that Alexander died. After he died, his secretary, Eumenes, gave one of Alexander's senior generals, Perdicas, plans that included the conquest of part of Italy. Robin Waterfield, an independent scholar with background in classes, uh, classics, total life science. Now, some scholars believe that the plans are not genuine, perhaps a forgery by Eumenes, or perhaps the whole story arose years, even decades later. Waterfield said, 
He said, however, I think the balance of evidence is that they are genuine. It's ultimately unclear what would have happened if Alexander the Great had tried to invade Italy. Again, I'm telling you, he had no reason to do that. The Romans were so strongly convinced Alexander would have attempted the invasion that the historian Livy, around 559 BC to 17 AD, wrote a text speculating how the invasion would have ended, with Livy predicting that the Romans would have defeated Alexander. Livy noted that Alexander's uncle, Alexander I of Epirus, northern Greece, who ruled a kingdom of the same name, tried to conquer part of Italy but was killed in the battle in 331 BC. Waterfield noted that descriptions of Alexander's plans indicate he would have invaded other locations in the Mediterranean before landing on the Italian mainland, and this suggested Alexander's forces would have been overwhelming if, uh, even if the Romans had allies in their fight against him. By the time he reached Italy and faced the Roman Republic, he would have had the resources of the entire Mediterranean at his command, a vast mercenary army, and he would have commanded all the supply routes, Waterfield said. The only thing that could have stopped him was internal rebellion or mutiny by his Macedonian troops. Philip Freeman, a humanities professor at Pepperdine University of California said that if Alexander had invaded Italy, he likely would have succeeded, noting that there were a number of Greek colonies in Italy already that might have supported Alexander's rule. That's what I'm saying. It, uh, it, Italy was mega Grecia, meaning Italy was the big Greece. There was no reason for Alexander to go against the big Greece. There were Greek colonies in all the place because Rome was established by Greeks. 600 BC. Now the Romans were taught and would have resisted, but they were not yet the powerful force of later centuries. Freeman said, if Alexander had invaded, I think there would have been no Roman Empire since Rome power would have been nipped in the bud, so to speak. And this is by Owen Jarris on Life Science. Again, he didn't have the... Uh, enlightenment to go in the west he had to go towards the east he had to get rid of the the what he called the abominable races of beings the creatures the monsters the nephilim he had uh, scribes with him every single day they would keep notes of what was going on and he did do away with a lot of nephilim now uh, this uh, i'm, I'm going to give leave a link below for you for life science but uh, also from what i know reading concerning what was going on with Alexander the Great. Please leave your comments. Thank you for your support. Please support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.